Exactly. We are open. We are trading. And the Dow is up 26 points in five seconds. What a performance. Well, now we're up 30. Up 35. Away we go. Up 40. To comment on what's going on, Cheryl Cassoni is with us. So is Liz, Todd Horowitz, and Hilary Kramer. Now, I want to start with Apple. As we've reported this morning, it's on track to sell 75 million iPhones in the holiday period. But if you look at the stock, it's way down from its April highs. What's going on, Cheryl? Well, no, you remember, the big part of this news is that this is, these are Chinese numbers that we're talking about. They can sell iPhones in China, but it's saturation. Apple also, as far as the stock goes, there's a lot of concern about the watch. Uh, the, the new Apple TV has not met expectations from what we know right now. We're not going to get the final numbers from the company until the first quarter of 2016. So 75 million iPhones is not enough to get them above $107 at, at a, a lower, share. And of being sold at a lower price in China, remember. Right. This big okay. number is coming out of China, Sh guys. Shipments could be 5 to 10 percent lower. The problem is that it's no longer being subsidized. The Apple iPhone is no longer being subsidized, even though you pay over who? time by the telephone companies. Phone companies. So it's oh. become more expensive. And oh. and as we keep going um, to greater and better advanced technology, the iPhone 7, how much better is it going to be than the iPhone 6? That's that's underlying can, all of can this. Can I add one thing here? Remember that when I was investigating Fitbits for you, Stuart, I did a whole story on it for your show. Fitbits, that was the big holiday seller, not the Apple Watch. And the Fitbit is a lot You're cheaper. missing, the, you're all missing the big story. Oh. <laughs> oh. India. <laughs> Apple is still not in India in a big way, and that's a huge market for them. But if it did get into India, then the stock would go up, wouldn't it? Correct, that's what I'm saying. If there's I'm anticipation the of that happening. Here. So, right. so maybe that's why the big analysts um, on, on Wall Street say it's going to be a $170 stock, because okay. they just have to get into India that's first. That's right. Thank Todd you. Horowitz. We'll that. Thank you very much. <laughs> the voice of reason from Chicago is Todd Horowitz. Horowitz, would you buy Apple at $107 a share now? No, sir, I would not buy it until probably 92. I'd like to see it test the low it made on October 24th, uh, August 24th. But Apple's one big problem with Apple is they haven't had any real good innovation over the last yes. couple of years. They have not seen anything new that's really exciting, plus the fact that they haven't really brought all that money back in to, to really buy back their stock and really take care of the stockholders. So okay. overall, I think it's going back to Tesla Lowe's. Would, would, would All of us, would we say that the Apple Watch is a failure? Cheryl? Yes, I would say that. Liz? Analysts are disappointed. Yeah. Uh, Alice, I'm just wondering, is it a failure? I'm a journalist. I'm just reporting what analysts are I went shopping. I'm trying to be a journalist. Hey, hey, I went shopping, and no, I did not get the Apple Watch. And I really wanted one. And then I talked to my friends, I did some research on the web, and I said no. Is it a failure? Yes, too complicated. Todd Horowitz, I've got to get you back in. Is the Apple Watch a failure? 100% 100, 100 failure. I was given one for a gift. I returned it already. Oh. Really? Whoa. You did that? You, it was free. Whoa. I did. Whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> Ooh, moving swiftly along. <laughs> Look at the S&P 500, why don't you? Basically flat on the year. And guess what? Some analysts are saying that next year will be worse. Liz, hold on a second. Yeah. I hate this. At the end of the year, everybody says, oh, what's going to happen next year? And nobody knows. Yeah. Nobody gets it right. Because so they were so state-of-the-art at the beginning of last year. <laughs> That's so, right. So this is so much rear-view mirror thinking and analysis from Wall Street. It's basically yesterday's data they're looking at. But we watch the trends. We talk to the guys on Wall Street to watch the trends. White-knuckled right, emotionally wider trading ranges on the Dow and the S&P. Why? We know what the Fed story is. But also sales seem to be coming down overall for the S&P 500. Earning profit margins are coming in a little bit uh, thinner. So that's the story that uh, interest costs and labor costs are going up. Okay. Yeah. Late, well, uh, Cheryl what? and Hillary, hold on. Yeah. If it looks like Donald Trump is going to be the next president of the United States of America, does the market go up or down? Up. Cheryl? It would go up. Really? Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting that. It'd be yeah. way more slippery <laughs> ride. People will not know what to expect. Yeah. Todd Horowitz, the voice of reason from Chicago, I call upon you one more time. If it looks like Donald Trump is going to be the president of the United States, does stocks go up or down? I think stocks go up no matter who it is, as long as it's not Hillary Clinton. <laughs> no matter who it is, so long as it's not. Wow. Okay, we got you. <laughs> time we looked at oil, I think. Investors maybe should be a bit worried if oil were to plunge all the way down to $30 a share because it's the rise in the price of oil that's fueling today's stock market rally. We're up 150 points almost right now. Todd, uh, come back in again. You, you agree with that? That if we get a plunge in oil, we'll get a plunge in stocks? 
I actually, Stuart, I really believe that there's going to be a plunge in stocks anyways. I think the oil story is pretty much played out, and it's more of now the growth story. We don't have enough growth in this country, which is why oil is struggling and why commodities are struggling down these levels, because you've had too much merger and acquisition and not enough true growth, not enough true manufacturing to make use of these natural resources that we're trying to see. Oil is stronger here as the appearance of a stronger market, but remember, it's the end of the year, markets are thin, dull markets tend to drift higher under any circumstances. As we saw yesterday, oil was way down, but by the end of the day, the markets had rallied almost back to flat with oil still down. Okay, I've got a trend story for everyone. First of all,